In music that was written during the late 1800s and beyond, the meter can often feel irrelevant. We often have long, flowing, melodic lines across multiple measures that reach a peak that feels quite independent of whatever the meter is. But if we're talking about earlier music, for instance, we still play a lot of music that was written during the 1700s, the story of meter is much different. Music back then was grouped very specifically into stressed and unstressed beats. If you're playing 4-4, four, four, the first beat receives the greatest stress, the third beat receives the next greatest stress, beats 2 and 4 are weak beats. This also applies within beats. If you're playing 16th notes, the first and third 16th notes are the strongest, the second and fourth are the weakest. If you're playing a series of three notes, the first in the group of three is strong, the second and third in that group are weak. When you're performing music, especially early music like this, remind yourself that metrically, this is not a democracy. Not all beats are created equal. Furthermore, that's why when you have rhythmic changes or disturbances in this early music, it's very expressive. The influence of an appoggiatura adding stress, a hemiola which rearranges beats, a series of syncopations which makes the middle of each beat strong momentarily. These are all much more expressive devices when you have a very set expectation of what is going to happen in a meter. Do you know what a hemiola is or a syncopation or an appoggiatura? If you don't, be sure you go look it up. Of course, meter does not become irrelevant after the 1700s, but it's very predictably very important in this early music. Happy Musical Meter Awareness Day here at Flutube.